Last week, a bipartisan legislation proposition called Chips for America Act, led by Chuck Schumer, was released. The bill aims to provide $52 billion for US-based semiconductor production and research. Over the last few decades, semiconductor production has shifted massively away from first world countries like the US to many other countries. While the US once provided 37% of the world's semiconductors, now it provides a mere 12%. This has brought with it security risks and potential for massive supply bottlenecks and wreckage, general wreckage in the supply chain, such as we're seeing now. The world is undergoing a massive supply shortage of semiconductors at the moment after tens or probably hundreds of millions of people around the world shifted to working at home last year for obvious reasons, thus requiring a lot more gadgets, computers, screens, and things like that around the house. The shortage is now strangling supply chains, even in overflowing into unexpected markets like automobile production because everything has microchips in it nowadays. And the shortage also leads to national vulnerabilities too. As the American relationship with production powerhouses like China continues to be like, not super awesome, um, as we're seeing in the news recently, um, this presents security issues that could balloon into paralyzing and debilitating weaknesses. Over this weekend, I released a series of videos covering AMD, and in one of those videos, we covered the competition between AMD and Intel in the CPU market, as well as AMD and Nvidia in the GPU market. Now, one of the double-edged swords on the side of AMD is that while they're growing like super massively, like really crazy growth recently, um, they're designers who are dependent on a company called Taiwan Semiconductor for their production. Though TSM is an amazing company that provides massive value for so many partners, including their prioritized and increasingly strengthening relationship with AMD, one can't help but be concerned by the aggression of China towards neighbors like Taiwan and other neighbors too, including Japan where I'm at as well. Um, that seems to be ramping up lately. Some commenters in that AMD video series also mentioned the fact that while Intel isn't really providing top tier tech at the moment, um, or competitive pricing really, uh, they do have their own production capacity and US based foundries um, at the moment. And if their tech can catch up with other players by getting to, for example, seven nanometer production, this could end up being a really big deal. So while this new Chips for America Act has just been proposed, should it end up coming into effect, it hopes to provide up to $52 billion to get production and R&D back on track, hopefully kicking the US back into high gear, maybe even something along the lines of number one in the world again? AMD, Intel, and Nvidia aren't the only ones set to benefit from such a proposition. There are numerous other players in the market as well, including Marvel, Micron, Analog Devices, Microchip, Skywork Solutions, Maxim, and Xilinx, who we hope becomes part of AMD coming up uh, this year, hopefully, if the acquisition ends up going through, if you wanna learn more about that and the benefits and potential risks of it, click up here. So this could potentially be one bit of bipartisan legislature that ends up really helping the entire country. Uh, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments section. If you'd like to learn more about the industry, please check out this series we just started. I probably will be following up on the Nvidia earnings this week as well too. Thank you guys for your time. Love you, stay generous.